makes sense, Jules, what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree. And I think this is also part of it. And that, that's maybe the, the, the one bit that we, we don't know about. From the guys that I know in that squad, no one ever said to me, Karim is a problem, he doesn't get on with people. I'm sure there's some in that squad who maybe didn't have like strong friendship with Karim, which I can understand. No, like the boys know better than me, but you've been in squads where not everybody is best friends, which is completely normal. I don't know, we've said it before in terms of leadership, if there was an issue there maybe between other leaders in that group. But again, I, I was not told that. I was not told that at the Euros where Karim played well, even if France were, were knocked out by Switzerland on penalties in the last 16. But just quickly, if we go on that, he was called back for the Euros as the, as the saviour almost. You know, after five and a half years being dropped for the sex tape scandal, all of that is coming back. It's a big surprise. No, nobody saw it coming. You know, we, we broke the news. I mean, that, that, that's just the tweet that we put out on him coming back that day, the day of the squad announcement, when just viral, he exploded. And yet, at the Euros, he was good, but the team wasn't. Then he comes back for this World Cup. He's still there for the World Cup after eight years of waiting. And this is a car crash. It's an absolute disaster. You just think, like, this is an incredible time, really, for him, if you think. And... and in a way, it's a shame because the guy is so talented, but on an, in another way, maybe that could have been all predicted as well. So definitely a personality thing, but I, I, I piggybacking on what you guys were talking about yesterday, I, I don't think it's the difference between where the World Cup is right. and, and it being in Paris. You know, uh, I think ultimately France didn't play well enough. This is just an issue that's raised itself as another story out with the football and the bad performance between a possible personality clash and, you know, you know, why would you send him home? Why wouldn't you keep him? Why couldn't you use him at least for a little bit if he's fit? Sort of scenario, but I agree with what Stevie was saying yesterday. It's, I, I don't think it would have been a matter of Benzema stays, France win the World Cup. I think it was always going to Argentina in the end. Is that kind of the accepting factor for the fans as well, Jules? Or is there frustration that Benzema wasn't there, wasn't there to come off the bench even and make an impact in that final? Yeah, it's a bit mixed, I think, to be fair. I, I'm, I'm in, the, in the camp that I think that a team with Benzema can only be better than a team without Benzema. I can understand the, the balance and the, 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 the synergy and, you know, how, how players gel. But a talent like that, I just don't think you can do without if he's fully fit and, and ready to go. And I think there's a lot of people in France who share that view. There's others who think, like, look, they went all that far without him and without Pogba and without Conte and all the others missing. And, and we, were, we were, like, uh, five centimetres away if Colomboani shot his five centimetres higher up to, to win the World Cup. So, so maybe we didn't need Karim in the end. I, I, we will never know. I just, I just think... For the player that he is and, and what he is as a footballer, I just think it's a shame that in the way he ends up, he, he finishes like this and that he missed, he missed out on the World Cup in the way it happened. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.